right, so since the last video, I've gone and taken out all the coils and just put or left uh, 12 of them in there. And I've changed the wiring from a delta configuration to a Y configuration. So I have three phases there with four coils each and they're all joined at the end there. And then as you can see here, I also have the uh, Hall effect sensors set up there on some of the brackets. So they're all in the right place there and just bonded in, into place with some epoxy. And so what this does allows me to run um, you know, far fewer coils and I can put more power through them for the, from the controller that I have. And subsequently I can actually get the, uh, the whole rotor to turn at a much better speed with this setup. And the other thing I've done was I've changed the blade angles now because I can fix them at certain angles. I've added another uh, 11 degrees to the angles there, as you can see. And the reason for that is when I did the calculations, I discovered that the way I was calculating the thrust was wrong and it was basically off by almost a factor of two. So the other thing I've discovered as well was the angle that I had on the blades for the speed that I was running this thing at and even the speed I'm running it at now was wrong and the angle of attack on the blades was pretty much zero for the speed that was running at and the uh, oncoming airspeed. So changing it up to 11 degrees, it basically gives me about a 10 degree angle of attack uh, on the blades now, which is probably in the best L over D lift over drag uh, angle for these blades, at least, you know, it's better. So they're generating, uh, or they will be generating a lot more thrust now for this angle. So with this more coarse pitch setting now, I believe that we still be able, should be able to get about twice the performance of a regular propeller um, compared to this. So uh, just to go back through the numbers there, a Cessna 172 should get about 460 pounds of thrust and a 182 would be about 640. A Cirrus um, 310 horse would be about 850 pounds of thrust. The Raptor was about 1,000 pounds of thrust and this, this thruster should be able to put out about uh, 800 pounds of thrust at 5,600 RPM. So here's the power setup that I'm using right now. I just have uh, five 12 volt batteries hooked in series there, and I'm running an MGM Comp Pro um, 12 kilowatt controller there. And it's also running with the Hall effect sensors. And so that one, the maximum power I'm getting out of it right now is only about five kilowatts. And as you can see, I've just got it all wired up there, as you've seen before. And I put a couple of streamers on there so we can see the airflow. As you can see, because that rotor is so far out of round from how it was manufactured, um, it's just not possible for me to balance this properly. It's 50 thousandths out of round and it actually started out being almost two inches out of round when I got it. And that's the best I can do with it. So unfortunately, I've tried to actually um, measure the thrust off of this thing, but because it, I can't balance it, it won't sit evenly uh, when it's running on the stand that I built for it. And so I can't get a nice smooth um, thrust measurement off of it but it should be putting out about eight pounds of thrust here at like 600 rpm and as you can see those blades that with the angle that i have on those blades here now it seems to be that they're stalling quite a bit at the low rpm it takes a little while before they actually start to generate uh, the thrust on there and once it gets going then you actually get some smooth flow coming off of there so given this configuration, 600 RPM is about the best I can get. And uh, it's not bad really, that's for 12 coils and it's obviously not the most ideal configuration for this electric motor anyway. 
Uh, but you can imagine if you basically had those 12 coils and had four sets of them, so 48 coils in there, you'd be able to put four times the amount of power in there. Um, but ob obviously with a better setup, you'd be able to do even better than that. And one of the things I wanted to mention too, was that so many people on the last video said that I need to have an inner ring on this. But if you think about it, the tips of the blades are running at half the speed of what they are on the outside. And not only that, if you look at the blades, they're aluminum blades, the amount of mass that's in just in the tip in like the top one inch of the blades is so negligible and running at half the speed, the amount of uh, force on those from centrifugal force is really not that much at all. I actually did run the FEA on this uh, a long time ago when I was designing this and those blades are not going to bend anywhere near where they would be deformed. They will flex definitely under the maximum thrust. Um, but they won't stay deformed or anything like that. So there's really no need to have an inner ring there. Most of the force that's on those blades gets pushed down to the, the mounting on the outer ring. So anyway, that's one of the um, comments I wanted to make about the, uh, about the configuration there. And a lot of people had commented about how would it handle a bird strike and obviously, you know, this size one wouldn't handle it very well. And that's why you have two of them on your aircraft. And, you know, if you end up losing both of them because you hit two birds at the same time, then I guess what you do is what, you know, a good pilot does, you just go and land in the Hudson. So finally, just to summarize, I think given a good configuration for the electric motor setup, the coils on this thing, I think you could get it up to 5,600, 6,000 RPM. Uh, you could also put larger uh, wheels there that, that the rotor's running on and you can get those bearings to run slower. Right now it's 11 to 1, so they're running 11 times faster than the than the rotor is. Um, but given the right setup, you could have this thing running at 6,000 RPM. And given that I think at 600 RPM, it's probably putting out about 8 pounds of thrust. At 6,000 RPM, so 10 times the speed, it should be putting out 100 times the thrust. So that would be 8 uh, 800 pounds of thrust and if you had two of these on an aircraft that's uh, 1600 pounds of thrust and I don't I don't know exactly what the power requirement would be for that right now um, but I think it would be you know half of what the same requirement would be for having a propeller set up anyway I'll leave you with one last run and that's about all I have for now on this video I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more um, enhancements to this I don't think there's anything else I can do on this prototype I'm interested to see what other people uh, get involved with and, and if anybody starts to sort of run some simulations. Uh, the models are available again still um, if people want it and I'll put my contact info uh, in the description of this video as well. And thanks very much for watching.